where is the fair use? All material under copyright in this derivative work are used according to fair use as described in sections 107 through 118 of the U.S. Copyright Act of 1971. This derivative work is offered as is for free, no copyright infringement was intended in the making of this derivative work. All copyrighted material is the property of their respective companies. This derivative work is under Creative Commons share like non-commercial unported license 3.0. Welcome, everyone, watching this on YouTube, and from the Gamers Bay Google Plus community. Today, we break from the show's usual format to bring you this very special, and very important, episode of Chloe and the Professor. It is our hope, you will find today's, episode informative. In our current era, the information we are about to impart to you is more vital than ever. It impacts not just the world of video games, but all aspects of life. With me to discuss today's top is our special guest, the professor. Thank you, Jake. This is indeed an important topic. In recent news, professor, we've learned that AAA game studio Ubisoft is breaking away from the annual franchise release cycle for Assassin's Creed. As has been discussed before, annual franchise releases have led to a stagnation of the biggest game studios. One has played lip service to wanting to change course, but unlike Ubisoft they have actually done little to convince the gaming community they are serious. Yes, it is true, prior to Ubisoft's decision one of the largest game studios has admitted, their practices are harmful to their brand, but since then they've done little to actually prove they were being serious. Not only will there not be an Assassin's Creed game released this year, but Ubisoft will be taking time to look at the lore and continuity of the franchise as a whole. True, they've admitted that the blatant exploitation of the Assassin's Creed franchise has created gaping holes in the continuity of the entire series as a whole. This other studio has done nothing like that with their main franchise, while it took the failure of Unity and poor sales of Syndicate to open their eyes. The fact that a major AAA studio like Ubisoft is willing to abandon the annual franchise cash cow for the sake of the integrity of the brand is a good sign. However, Professor, you believe this is ultimately connected to something else that is happening. Something that isn't specifically connected to video games. Nothing really stands alone, everything is connected. The idea that something not obviously connected to video games couldn't impact them is a fallacy. There is a shift in attitude happening around the world. This change is slow, especially in the United States. To put it bluntly, there are those with a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. They will lie, cheat, and steal to protect it in desperation. But, what does this have to do with video games? Everything that exists in the system is a part of the system. Remember I said everything is connected. The greedy attitudes of the American corporate AAA studios is connected to the larger issue at hand. This issue, Jake, is that the system is rigged, blatantly so. It is impossible to ignore. The average person living in inner city America experiences it every day. People who work two or three jobs and still can't afford to eat at McDonald's. All of it, Jake, all of it, can be traced back to one source. It is what connects greed in the video game industry with poor families struggling to make ends meet. Follow their roots, and you'll find one common denominator that connects them all together. What could cause all of that? What is the one thing all of these have in common? Wall Street. That is what connects them. Wall Street? Innocence. It is the banks. Few people realize this, but all of the major corporations in America are owned by a handful of the world's most powerful Wall Street banks. Banks which are controlled by a small cabal of rich and powerful families. The same banks which caused the financial crisis of 2008. The same banks which are even now spiraling downward into an even worse financial crash. That was the subject of a book by Michael Lewis called The Big Short, Inside the Doomsday Machine. The book inspired a film of the same name, which tells the story of how the crash in 2008 got started. Yes, and if you look at what is happening in Wall Street today it is clear the banks didn't learn their lesson. The media is doing its best to keep people distracted, but they can't hide it. Wall Street is circling the drain, 
and this time there won't be anyone to bail them out again. Yet, the question still remains, how can this possibly connect gaming and poor families? The common thread is that they're both affected by the excesses of Wall Street. This is what makes large corporations put into place exploitive practices which negatively impact both their employees and their customers. This is what connects them, Jake. This is why wages are low. This is why large, manufacturers are outsourcing jobs to other countries for cheap labor. The list goes on and on. How did it get this way, Professor? Capitalism without strict regulation will eventually swallow democracy, and we are now seeing the results. We have a government that simply doesn't function anymore. We have a Congress which is deeply divided, and a president who is afraid to use the bully pulpit to call out those who aren't doing their constitutional duty. The wants of a powerful, rich minority are now more important than the will of the people, and it is this ideology that has created the situation we have today. We are diving headlong into fascism. Wait, Professor, isn't that going a bit far? I know times are bad, but is it really, that, bad? I know it isn't what you want to hear, but sometimes the truth can be hard to swallow, but denying it won't help us. We have to accept this is happening, but accepting it doesn't mean we have to let it happen. There are 14 defining characteristics of fascism. Let me list them for you. Number 1, powerful and continuing nationalism. Number 2, disdain for human rights. Number 3, identification of enemies as a unifying cause. Number 4, supremacy of the military. Number 5, rampant sexism. Number 6, controlled mass media. Number 7, obsession with national security. Number 8, the meshing of religion and government. Number 9, corporate power protected. Number 10, labor power suppressed. Number 11, disdain for intellectuals and the arts. Number 12, obsession with crime and punishment. Number 13, rampant cronyism and corruption. Number 14, fraudulent elections. Oh, my, God, Professor. I've seen many of these reflected in our country today, correct? In large and small ways, all of those points describe our country, but it isn't too late to do something about it. But, what could we possibly do to stop this, put down the controller, and get involved? Become a volunteer for political groups who are working to turn things around. Volunteer to help out with campaigns in your state for candidates who want to make real change for this country. Get registered to vote, if you are over 18, and volunteer to help with voter registration. Do something, do anything, which helps move this country forward in a better way. Call and write your local representatives and your state senators. Tell them you want tougher regulations for Wall Street. Tell them you don't want more war. Tell them you want money and religion taken out of politics. Tell them you want them to do their jobs rather than what their billionaire campaign contributors want them to do. Don't let up. Put the pressure on heart. Treat this like it's the hardest boss in Dark Souls you've ever fought, and never surrender. It's going to take all of us working together without ceasing to make this happen. Together we can do anything. Together we can win and make this country a better place for everyone, and not just a privileged elite. If we stand together, united, we can really make this country a better place, actually, we can make this whole world a better place, but we have to be willing to do what it takes to make that happen. What about that change in attitude you mentioned earlier? What I described what we should do here is already happening in other countries. There is pushback against the same kind of corruption and greed that is destroying our nation. We don't see it because we're taught to believe the world revolves around us. We are kept distracted, but attitudes are changing. People are waking up to what's going on and they're taking action, but we need more people to get involved. Whether you become a volunteer for the presidential campaign this year, or you join the fight for fair use rights on YouTube every little thing helps. Because, as I said from the start, it is all connected. Professor, you've given us all a great deal to think about. I'd like to thank you for coming on to the show today. Maybe this episode will help make a difference. Every little thing helps. Contribute in whatever way your heart leads you. This is why we're going to win. This is why we're going to take back our country, our world and make it a better place for everyone and not just a few. Alright, that's our show for today. 
Next week we return to our regular schedule, but with a change. A new episode of Chloe and the Professor will be released every Tuesday and Friday. There is a new show in the works, stay tuned for future announcements. Until then, please like, favorite and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with all of our latest content. You can interact with us either in the comments below, or on the Gamers Bay Google Plus community. See you next time.